In order to effectively fish Western Canada's flowing waters, anglers must develop a system that allows them to cover water and effectively catch the trout. Me and Tim have developed a system that uses two common methods of fishing amongst fly fishermen and it's worked for numerous species of trout throughout the West. We've used this in Alberta and British Columbia and on this show we'll be demonstrating it for small rainbows in a little creek and later in the show we're going to throw back to some footage from earlier in the summer when me and Tim ran into some monster cutthroat trout on a tiny creek. Let's not waste any time and let's go work that system. Well, I guess trying to find our old haunts isn't as hard as we thought. Uh, we took some old bush trails, but looks like they now marked this trail down to the creek. So after being here about 50,000 times, we're going to get back down here. Sometimes with this system, uh, the fish won't rise to the dry fly at all, or the run will actually look better suited to nymphing, so I'll let Andy run through it with the nymph. This one is quite fast, so I'm not too sure how much luck I'll have here with the dry fly. Tim caught nothing and didn't even have a single rise for his fly, so we're going to see if the fish are feeding subsurface and run nymph through here. There's also Rocky Mountain whitefish. Wow. Ooh. There's one. Oh, a little rainbow. See? Tim ran a dry fly through that hole, and it was a pattern and nothing even came up but I ran nymph through here and I didn't get the biggest of fish but got a scrappy little rainbow they got a really unique color in this creek it's not a real trophy but it's a certainly a trophy for the eye let's get that hairs ear nymph out and get him back there he goes what me and Tim are referring to as a system throughout the show is nothing that's really complex or out of the ordinary for the average fly fisherman it just involves two methods of fishing a creek. A dry fly is the first primary part of the system, and the nymph is the secondary part of the system. Normally, Tim runs a dry fly, and I'll run the nymph. For example, when we get a nice run such as this one right here, Tim will cast with a dry fly, and if there's nothing coming to the surface, I'll follow up with the nymph. We like to use the dry fly first, because if you're nymphing with a strike indicator, and you put that indicator over a rising trout, chances are he might not come back up for the dry fly. So it's just a system of covering the top of the water column and the bottom of the water column. And when you're fishing some cooler creeks such as these ones, or the tributaries of these ones, you want to cover the bottom of the water column quite often because the water is cooler and there might not be a hatch going on. So by covering the top of the water and the bottom of the water, you'll be working the system and you'll be catching fish.
the flatter water here is a little nicer for casting the dry fly into. That's kind of the advantage of the nymph fishing part of the system though, is that you could cast it in the turbulent water, you could cast it in the slow water, you cast it in anything in between and you'll catch fish, but the dry fly you're a little more limited. But I have to say the dry fly sure is fun. There's a nice rainbow trout sitting up here. Let's see if we can get him with that dry fly. There he is. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, he popped off. Come on. He's jumped three times. Just acrobatic. And it's a nice size one for this creek. We've been having a rough day trying to bring him in to show you guys on camera, but I think I've got this one. Here. Look at those red markings along the side. Dark red fins. He wants to go back. Oh. Jeez, that one did not cooperate at all. There we go. It's a nice little guy. Oh, there he goes. Well, why don't we take a minute here and we'll talk about how to select a fly rod when fishing a small stream like this. The first thing you're going to want to take into consideration is the size of the fish you're after. As you can see, today we're after quite little fish. Little fish like that, what we're actually using for them is a 6 foot 2 weight rod. That's because the, the maximum size is going to be up to about 10 inches. If we're going up to fish that might be 14 or 15 or 16 inches, we're probably going to want to step up to a 3 weight rod, maybe more likely a 4 weight. Another thing to take into consideration is the size of the water you're fishing. As you can see, the stream we're on right now is quite little and a long cast is gonna be all of 20 feet. The 2.8 rod is perfect for that. Another thing is the size of your fly. While this isn't the most crucial, it is difficult to cast large flies with smaller equipment. We're using very little number 14, 16, and 18 dry flies today. So we aren't very concerned about using the 2.8. If we're stepping up to larger flies, maybe a size eight or a size six, like we would be using in stonefly or hopper season, we're probably gonna use a four or five weight rod. And those are three things you're gonna to wanna to take into consideration when deciding what fly rod to use. So what we got ahead is a nice deep pool and I've got a nymph about two feet down or so. You always want to be a bit deeper than the depth of the water you're fishing. Cast one up here at the head and let it sink down into that trough. There's a nice drop off down there. Oh. Uh, gold ribbed hairs or nymphs work well at this time of year in bigger sizes. Oh, I had a hit there to imitate the uh, 
golden stonefly nymphs that are common in southern Alberta and southern BC. Oh, it's deep up there. Got one. Nice cutthroat trout. But just in the side channel of the creek. And it's actually bigger than the creek itself, I think. Oh, a 2 8. You know, the size of this creek, it looks like a 2 8 would be perfect, but these fish are a little more powerful than that. This one's not huge, but it's a nice size cut. Yep. See, they're pretty pure west slope cutthroat trout in this creek. Just the classic colors. I'm gonna turn her loose. Oh yeah, side channels, baby. Tim went through with the dry, so I'm gonna see if I could get him on the nymph. Just hooked the dandy on the nymph, which shows the effectiveness of this system. He's wrapped himself in my tippet though, so I'm gonna have a hard time getting him in. He's trying to take me into that wood. Oh, he's unwrapped, he's unwrapped. I still got him. Oh, oh boy. Oh, this is a good one, Tim. This is a big fish. Oh, look at him scrapping that shallow water. He's pushing the limits of this three weight. Ooh, I think I got him in. This looks like a nice, pure, big west slope cut. That just shows you how good this system works. Look at the size of that cutthroat. It's a good 16, 17 inch. We'll get them back in the water though, because it's so warm out. As you can see, it's got a kite because it's a male. That's just a big male. We want to take care of that one. See, it's got the orange slashes. Just overall, a beautiful, well-conditioned fish. Point him upstream, give him a revival, and there he goes. Another quality rest West Slope Cutthroat Trout. Still on that, me and Ed, you're still working the system and it's paying off. Oh yeah. That is beauty. A solid West Slope Cutthroat. Look at the head on that puppy. That's what you get when you fish the system. Quality, thick cutthroat trout like that. Some classic colors on it. I'm gonna have to pop the fly out and turn it loose. It's hooked a little deep, but it's okay. Fly popped out, it's barbless. We'll turn her upstream. Oh, that's a solid 17, 18 inch west slope from a small stream like this. Can't tell you where we are today, but I can tell you that we're catching some nice cutthroats using this system. And this system works for cuts anywhere that you go. If you have a couple people, she's a little tired. Get her back in the main current here. Get her, get her going there. And she's just gonna hold there in slow water for now. And that's how you work the system. I get the top end of this pool and we've seen a couple down there. 
and I've got a two weight on. Oh no, big male. Oh man, I'm surprised I even brought it in. Oh, that's a dandy. Oh no, it's gonna be so hard to net. That's a hog. Back in the water. Let him back in the water. Well, I guess finding the uh, old haunt to fell down the... Woo! Uh, at westernsportfishing.ca. <laughs> <laughs>